are 10 ounce silver bars worth stacking? As you can see, I believe they are. In fact, they are one of my favorite ways to add to my silver stack. But wait, before you go stacking up these shiny little bricks of treasure, watch the rest of this video. Hey everybody, it's me, Smart Silver Stacker. I'm about to go over some of the great qualities that these 10 ounce bullion bars have to offer, and some of their potential downsides as an investment as well. But first, let's take a closer look at some of these bars. As you can see, these Scottsdale 10 ounce silver stacker bars are really some of my favorite 10 ounce bars, probably my favorite pattern for a 10 ounce bar actually. And they really just have everything you want in a bar. They're finely machined, so very nice level of detail on this. They have a reeded edge. They've got this security pattern on the back. They also come with an individual serial number on each bar. And you know, the Scottsdale logo, the lion's head there is pretty awesome. And these are just awesome bars. And they call them stackers because, as you can see, they've got this machined lip and then this uh, raised portion here. And they just stack up really nice. So wherever you're storing them, they are an efficient way to stack up silver. And they're just beautiful bars. So I really like these. Now, I haven't been stacking as many of these lately. In fact, I haven't purchased any of these in a while because the premiums right now on Scottsdale silver bars are just a little bit too rich for my blood. And we'll talk a little bit more about premiums on 10 ounce bars and why that's an important topic in just a few minutes. But for right now, let's just say that the premiums on these Scottsdale stacker bars are somewhere between four and six dollars over the spot price, depending on where you look. And that's just a little bit too much for me for a generic silver bar. Now, I use the generic term just to indicate that these were not made at a government mint. You know, they're not a legal tender coin or anything like that. They're just a private mint's product. So even though these are really cool bars and they're beautiful and they have a lot of nice features, they are still considered generic. Back when I was stacking these a couple years ago, you used to be able to go on the Scottsdale Mint eBay store and they would have sales on there at least once or twice a month. They would always have something on sale, whether it would be the stacker bar or their 20 ounce cast bars or one of their other patterns. They'd always have something real cheap and available close to spot. And I picked all of these Scottsdale bars up for just maybe a dollar over spot, a buck fifty, something like that, back when they had those sales. Now, they haven't had those sales on their eBay store in a while, unfortunately. The last one I remember seeing was definitely way before the silver squeeze and current situation with premiums on physical silver products. But if you can find these uh, closer to spot, then they are an awesome silver bar, and I would not shy away from adding some of these to your stack. You might see that I've got this uh, 10 ounce Australian kookaburra round here. And I know that this is technically not a bar. It is a coin, actually. It's legal tender. It's a $10 coin. But I don't know. There's something about a 10 ounce coin or a 10 ounce round to me that just feels more like a bar. And I don't know. Once you get past five ounces for a coin or a round, I think you're slipping into bar territory. Now, am I technically wrong? Yes, this is a coin. But still, when I'm holding this coin in my hand, it does not register as a coin. I think that if your piece of silver bullion is hefty enough to serve as a defensive tool, then I'm sorry, uh, I'm counting it as a bar. And you're welcome to try and change my mind on that, but I'm still including this in this video. Now, here is another bar from the Scottsdale Mint, and unlike the stacker bar, it's not finely machined or anything. This is a cast poured bar. So this bar is poured into a closed cast mold, and then it is stamped with the Scottsdale logo and information about the fineness of the silver and the weight on the front there. And I do like this bar. I like their poured bars quite a bit. I think they're cool. Um, although I'm not, for a 10 ounce bar, I'm not as big a fan of the poured bars as I am the stacker. And that's just because the stacker has all these other cool features like the serial number and the security pattern. And they're just a little bit of a neater piece of silver. They stack up nicer. Now, here's the most recent 10 ounce bar that I picked up. And this is a super generic bar. It's from uh, CNT Minting. This is also a poured cast bar. And this is just a real basic bar. You can see that there's even some imperfections and stuff on here. So this is not like a real fancy piece of silver, 
but I kind of like its just rugged, uh, robust nature. You can definitely stack bars like this up very nicely. And I picked this up recently from SD Bullion. I did pay, I think, uh, two or three bucks over the spot price of silver at the time, but it was actually the lowest cost generic bullion they had available on the site. So, you know, times are changing. Premiums on generic silver bars like this used to be maybe under a buck, but now you're gonna be looking in the two to three dollar range over spot, and I guess that's a good deal. Now, maybe if you go to your local coin shop or something like that, you might be able to get a better deal. And if you can, I would definitely uh, take advantage of that because it is always best to get the most silver for your money. But if you're shopping with the big online dealers right now, the premiums on generic silver 10 ounce bars are a little bit higher than they have historically been, just like they are on just about all the physical products. And here I've got this MSC bar. This is a bit of a vintage bar. This is a little bit older, and I'm gonna talk a bit more about vintage and collectible 10 ounce bars here in just a moment. For the time being, we can just take a look at this one. And I picked this up for pretty close to spot price a while ago. I think it was on sale on the Atmex eBay store. I don't really recommend shopping for silver on eBay most of the time, but sometimes if you go to the big online bullion dealers like Atmex, SD Bullion, uh, Scottsdale Silver, these guys, they run eBay stores, and sometimes the prices that they have there are more favorable than the prices that they have on their actual dealer websites. And one of the advantages on eBay is that you can pay with a credit card. So if you wanna get points or something like that, you can uh, shop for your bullion on eBay. And if you wait for a good deal or a good sale, you can really take advantage of that because you know if you're paying on the dealer websites, typically you need to pay with something like an ACH transfer or a bank wire to get the best price, but not so on the eBay stores. So anyway, uh, this is the only real vintage or collectible bar I have, and I did pick it up for close to spot. I didn't pay a real uh, premium for it, but if you go take a look at these on eBay, they do fetch a little bit more of a premium than just your generic silver bar. And this is not like a super collectible 10 ounce bar by any means, but it is old and it is vintage and there is a little bit of a collectible market for that. Finally, I've got this uh, Mint ID bar. And these are always a controversial bar on the channel. I always get a lot of comments about these uh, bars whenever I put them in a video. That's because this has this little uh, NFC RFID tag on the back of it. And that's a security feature, which I think is actually pretty cool because you can open up the Mint ID app on your phone and you can just hold your phone up against that little chip and it will tell you whether this is a legitimate bar or not. And it'll give you some of the history on that bar. So I think it's a really cool security feature. I think that while this isn't foolproof, I mean, I'm sure you can clone an NFC chip or something like that, but honestly, I think that's all just way too much hassle for counterfeiters. And when they see this kind of security feature, they're probably just gonna go make something easier. They're not gonna try to counterfeit a Mint ID bar. I think that would be entirely too much work and not enough profit for a counterfeiter out there. So my silver having RFID chips in it is not really a big deal to me. If you say stick this inside of a metal box, uh, which, you know, that's how a lot of people store their silver, that RFID tag is going to, uh, you're not gonna be able to scan it from outside of that metal box. And if bars come in plastic like this one, you can see I've left it in the plastic. Do that because it'll help keep the bar look shiny and new. But remember, these are just basically generic bullion bars, so you don't need to worry about handling them or, uh, you know, toning or marks that they might get on them because they're going to be worth the same regardless. Now, what are some of the pros of stacking 10 ounce bullion bars? Well, historically, these have always been one of the lowest premium forms of silver that you can buy. When I was getting these Scottsdale silver bars and they were on sale on the Scottsdale eBay store, I was paying maybe a buck over spot. And honestly, at the time, that even seemed like kind of a high premium. Bars like this in the past, you've been able to pick up for maybe 50 cents over spot, you know, somewhere under a dollar over the spot price and uh, you wouldn't really think twice about that. But nowadays, the premiums have gone up a little bit on these. When I picked up this bar from SD Bullion, it was still the cheapest generic bullion that they had on the website. I think it might've been the same price, say, as like a generic one ounce round, but I was in the mood to get a bar. I do like bars quite a bit. As you can see, there's just something satisfying about the heft they have. And even though the premiums are a little higher than they have been in the past, these are still one of the lowest cost forms of bullion you can get. And if you're lucky enough to have a nice local coin shop near you, you may be able to still pick these up for a nice low premium. The online dealers, it's gonna be two to three bucks over spot, but if you go to a local coin shop, you might be able to get a deal. 
Uh, you know, I don't really have a local coin shop anywhere near me, so I still make it to them occasionally when I travel or if I feel like driving a bit. For the most part, I am stacking from the online dealers. And as far as liquidity, 10 ounce silver bullion bars are one of the most common forms of bullion. Usually anytime I have visited a local coin shop, they have some for sale. And you shouldn't have a hard time finding a ready buyer for these as well. Most coin shops will be willing to take those off of your hands without much problem. Now, another nice thing about these is that they stack up really well. So you can stack, especially these stacker bars. I mean, they're really built for it but they stack up really, really nicely. And as you can see, I mean here in just this compact little space, I've got 50 ounces of silver and it's a very uh, neat and convenient way to store your silver bullion, whether you've got a safe or a vault or uh, even a safe deposit box or whatever you're doing to store your silver, these are gonna make the most out of whatever space you have. Compared to something like, say, a 100 ounce bar, these are pretty divisible. Now, they're not as divisible as your one ounce coins or rounds. If you need to sell some silver, you can take these to the coin shop and you can do it 10 ounces at a time, so that is not bad. How I think about these is they're almost like the $100 bill of bullion. And another nice thing about 10 ounce bars is like I said, some of these bars actually are collectible. If you can find an old bar, a vintage bar, ones that were minted back in the 80s, there were a lot of bars minted in the 80s during kind of the craze there where uh, silver spiked up and throughout the rest of the decade, there was a lot of physical bullion produced and some of those companies aren't around anymore. So if you can get your hands on those, they do have a little bit of a collectible premium. So that is a nice thing about 10 ounce bars as well. There is a collectible market for them. Now, as far as the downsides, like I said, these are a lot more divisible than a 100 ounce bar, but they're a lot less divisible than say a one ounce round or a coin. So if you do wanna sell these, you've gotta sell them 10 ounces at a time. Or if you wanna do a transaction in silver, you're gonna to need to do 10 ounces at a time. So you might need some smaller bullion around as well to uh, make change, so to speak. Another downside about selling these is that if you just walk into a dealer or a coin shop, you're probably only gonna get spot price for these. Some dealers might even be offering under spot, although, in today's environment where physical products are sort of at a premium and there are some uh, tight supply issues, you might be able to get spot from your dealer. Maybe if someone really wants something like a 10 ounce Scottsdale stacker, you might be able to command a little bit more than spot from a dealer, but you can't count on that. Basically, when you walk into a dealer, they're going to consider all of these 10 ounce bars to just be generic silver. Getting your premium back when you go to sell these it's probably not gonna happen unless you take your time and you sell to another stacker or a private investor. You know, you might go on Craigslist or on eBay or something like that, and you could probably get some of the premium back. Now, also, when you go to sell something like this MSC bar, something that's a little bit more vintage or collectible, and some of the bars, like I said, this one's not like super rare or vintage or anything. It just commands a little bit higher premium than the other bars. But there are bars out there, um, some of the poured bars, especially uh, the hand poured bars, the, some of the old vintage angle hard bars, some of those are worth quite a bit more than their spot price. So if you do take your time and you find your buyer and you find a collector out there, you might get considerably above spot, but that again is gonna take a little bit more time and effort than just unloading them to a dealer. So that is something you might have to deal with when you are selling your 10 ounce bars. And also, like I said, these are pretty liquid. Um, most dealers, I don't think, are going to have an issue buying these from you, but they're not as liquid as, say, like an American Silver Eagle. And that's probably the gold standard for liquidity and bullion, so just about anything is not going to be quite as liquid as a Eagle or a Maple Leaf, but that is something you need to be aware of. If you, you, know, you want really high liquidity in your silver stack and you want to be able to unload this stuff uh, rapidly and with the most ease, this might not be the best type of silver bullion for you. But I do think that these have a spot in just about everybody's stack. And one other downside that you might have to deal with with silver bullion bars like this, these 10 ounce bars, is they're not legal tender, they're just generic bullion. So regulations might treat these a little bit differently than silver coins, depending on where you live. If you live in Europe, for example, you might have to pay a VAT, a value added tax when you're buying something like this. So it's probably not gonna be the most popular form of silver in your jurisdiction if you're having to pay additional fees just because it's not a coin or legal tender. 
And then also in the US, some states might charge you sales tax on these, or they might charge you sales tax on these if you're not buying a sufficient quantity of them. Your purchase might need to be above a certain dollar threshold to avoid the additional sales tax. So you gotta know the local laws and regulations in your area, but if you're going down to your local coin shop, make sure you find out if there's any taxes or fees that you're gonna have to pay on this specific type of bullion. It's something to watch out for. So I think 10 ounce silver bars do have a place in everybody's stack. They're a great way to pick up low premium silver bullion. They're a good way to get the most ounces for your money. Even today, they're one of the most affordable forms of bullion and I really enjoy stacking them. I do think that most stackers should start with some smaller denomination bullion, either some silver eagles or maple leaves, uh, maybe a Perth Mint kangaroo, something like that. But once you have a core position in some smaller silver bullion, these are something you can start adding to your stack and stacking silver bars can be really satisfying. If you're picking up some generic 10 ounce bars at your local coin shop or from online dealers, you never know what you might get. One thing you can do to kind of familiarize yourself with vintage silver bars is go on eBay and do a search for 10 ounce silver bars and then filter the results by sold auctions only. So then the results are just gonna give you auctions that have actually completed. And as you look through those, you'll notice that some bars are going for way above spot price. Take a look at those so you can kind of get an idea of which bars carry a high premium and I think that it can really behoove all stackers to familiarize themselves with that sort of nuance when it comes to stacking, because that way, if you're at the local coin shop and you're looking in the generic bar case, you're going to know what you're looking at. If there's something rare there, you'll recognize it and you'll know what it is. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you love stacking silver, please give this video a big thumbs up and share it with your friends. Don't forget to click that subscribe button so you can see all the great gold and silver content I have coming up in the future. While I do love 10 ounce silver bars, there are other great types of silver to stack as well. And if you've ever wondered what kind of silver bullion the other stackers who are watching these videos like to stack the most, then you should check out this video to find out how they answered in a poll where I asked them exactly that question. A big thank you to everyone who watched all the way to the end. Keep on stacking. I will catch you next time. Smart Silver Stacker, out.